Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. Um, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. My co-host is Allison Forsgren, who's here today again, and we're going to kind of we're going to be talking about uh, a a a topic relevant to my friends Frank and Mary. Because remember, Frank and Mary's goal in life, if you haven't heard before, is to live in their house until they die and then be buried in the backyard. And if they live in Nantucket, they really that's exactly what they want to do. And so, a part of the show is about allowing you as a senior or a person who is working with a senior to really understand the things that are going on in Nantucket, the people that you need to know, the programs that you need to know about, as well as what maybe could be on Nantucket, what we could aspire to. So today we're specifically focusing on... The Elder Expo. The Elder um. Expo. So, so we're going to talk a little bit about the Elder Expo and then talk about our wonderful guest. Maybe we should introduce him first so that he's not just sitting here this is This is our dear friend Greg Margolis. He is the chef and owner of um, the Corner Table and the Nantucket Culinary Center. Is that That's correct? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. And was a guest of ours last year at the Elder Expo. So yeah, I'm excited to come back and do yep. it again. He's so, going to do a cooking demonstration. Yeah. And, oh, um, don't tell too much. We're oops, going to talk okay. to him about it. Because I don't <laughs> well, know, that, except that I'm going to be there. I'm going to have a little table, oh, table. Oh, excellent. The Elder Expo, for, for what it's worth, I, I do a lot of these kinds of shows in other senior centers, mm -hmm. and I typically hate them. And so Laura Stewart, several years ago, said, oh, you really ought to go to the Elder Expo. I was like, nah, I don't want to go. So then about three years ago, I came for the first time. I couldn't believe it. The typical Elder Expo, you're kind of sitting there at your table, and everybody's just running around trying to get the little tchotchkes off the table, and then that's it. Here, people come over and talk to you. They bring their friend over. Oh, did you meet so and so? And dude, and you started. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It total the Elder Expo totally reflects kind of the blessing of Nantucket. This sense of community, which is Nantucket. So of course that's why I come back. Well, this year it's and going I hear to it be. Keeps growing. It I keeps hear. growing. Yeah. There are new things yeah. as the Council on Aging changes. It's a program that the Council on Aging puts on for the town. Um, we are supported by the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs, who... Dis who distinguish that from the Council right. on Aging. Right. Well, the Council on Aging is the town body. Um, it's a nominated committee. Um, yeah. And the Center for, and the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs is, a non, is our nonprofit arm. Mm -hmm. And they support um, the Council on Aging as, as well as other things. Yeah. The town of Nantucket owns the real estate where the Seltmar Senior Center is, yeah. but the Center for Elder Affairs Owns the building, the so it's a nonprofit. Actually, owns. Yeah, the so it's an I'm interesting saying. combination of the two, and very unusual for. Yeah, yeah, I've never heard yeah. that. I've never heard of that arrangement. Before. Nantucket's very special. And I've never had a, known of a senior center that is actually owned by the nonprofit. You know, that's a that that itself. I've never. Right, heard we're that. a very unique place. Yes. But so talk but, about the the. So the the, so the expo is going to be held on the twentieth of October. Mm -hmm. Saturday, um, Saturday the twentieth. Saturday the twentieth from ten a.m. till one p.m. Yeah. Um, it's later this year than it has been previous years because we always competed with the ta the county fair out in Tom Nevers. And so yeah. this year, we that's not going to happen anyway, but we didn't know that. <laughs> and we thought that we would plan this to be yeah. later just because it was a more relaxed, you know, there are fewer pressing things to do on yeah. a Saturday between 10 and 1. And, the, and le there were less of the troops kind of coming from offshore to... Right. Right, to fill up the traffic and right. all that stuff. So. And so it's going to be later this year. Um, yeah. One big draw is the, um, the flu shot, yeah. which is provided for free. Mm -hmm. um, we're having some changes to how that's going to be administered this year. When you check in, you will get a number. Um, it's a first come, first serve basis. There yeah. will be at least 100 doses. Um, we don't know exactly yet. The Visiting Nurses Association is the one who does that portion of the program. Um, but you'll get a number. And then your number will be called, and you'll go to the auditorium instead of the cafeteria and get your shot. Because so this is all happening at the high school. It all happens at the high school. Right. Um, the and cooking again, demonstration. It's all, it's all, and it's all free. Oh, all free. It's all free. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You sign in, and, um, and you are asked for feedback, because we like to make improvements as, as much as we can. But um, you know, one of the big changes is that the shots will be given in the in the auditorium, okay. so there'll be yeah. seats. You know, last year it was really hot, and 
people standing around waiting in line. So although it's first come, first serve, you'll get a number and then the, your number will be called over the loudspeaker system and then, then you'll go and wait five minutes instead of waiting the whole entire day. So That's all good. Yep, that's a great improvement. Th yep. th that's going to be great. We have um, uh, Dr. Rocco Monto will be one of the speakers. He has a new book called The Fountain, How to Make 60 the New 30. Oh, to be 60 again. Oh, to be oh my God. Exactly. Right. So, and now, is he, a, is he a local doctor? He's a local he? doctor. He's, yeah. a, he's an orthopedic surgeon here um, at the Nantucket Cottage Hospital. Yeah. Just about everyone has had at least one procedure, yeah. including myself, done by Dr. Monto. But this is a... I really want to make, like, 70 the new... 40, you know, I think, right? I think, but, well, I think you can. Well, well maybe. maybe. Um, but he, he wrote a book about healthy eating and healthy living and um, practices what he preaches and is it very enthusiastic about speaking. Then Greg will be doing um, a, sh um, a cooking demonstration. We'll let him talk about that. And then I believe there's going to be one other speaker that's not quite yet confirmed. But um, please make plans to come to the Elder Expo. Um, yeah. Families seniors, people who are curious about what is happening and what can happen are all invited. It's a drop-in, drop-out, free situation. So. And I know that, the, that, once again, the exhibitors are pretty much everybody in, that's here. Right, right? yes. So every, every, from the, I know the Athenaeum talks about some of the stuff that they do. Yeah, Fo the Red from, Cross. The Red Cross. Yeah. Folks from, what, what's the, 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 I don't know if you know, the name of the place on Main Street, which is a, which is a, an assisted and assisted living. Oh, no, no. no. Main the, Street. The home. Oh, the uh, Homestead. Yes, the Homestead. Yeah. Homestead Sherman Commons place. will be there, yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> you know, hopefully um, Nantucket Safe Harbor for Animals will be there. Um, so a lot a lo of people, yeah. So a lot of people. Yeah, so a, lot a lot of people. people. And, you know, if, if people aren't there, then they can find out, you know, get information on how to reach them anyway, because Rachel Day from Human Services will be there. Um, so, and do you have a band this year? There, yeah, there'll be music. That was my favorite yeah, part of it. Yeah, I mean, I should. That's 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 wrong. My favorite part was the sense of the community. Yeah. But the band is great because once, for really two reasons: one, it's music, so it's very pleasant, and two, for people who are talking to some of the vendors or or whatever, there, it automatically gives you a sense of privacy. It mm -hmm. works great because there's just enough sound that you're not feeling like if you're talking to somebody that the person next to you is kind of going, uh -huh, you know? So when I know that that's a big deal here. Right? It is, it, yeah. People, people are very always good. It is about, a great space. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we're gonna be bringing some people to the auditorium for shots, yeah. and then the speakers will be in a large group instruction area instead. So they'll, you know, it won't disrupt the, the program the, the to have program. the speakers, so. And so now, we wanna talk about, some, about food? We wanna talk about about right? food, yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's give it over to Greg Margolis, who is going to be doing whatever he wants to do <laughs> oh, oh, in the that's, kitchen. That's a so. nice thing. I like so, doing whatever I want. So, so you can just kind of talk to folks about, or to us about who you are. So you're I sure. Guess. My name is Greg Margolis. We talked about. Um, yeah. I own and operate and, the Nantucket Culinary Center and yeah. the Corner Table Cafe. So and, we do. And you're not all local. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a watcher, but sure. But, but you've been here a long time, right? Well, you've been here you know, it depends how you, how you count. Right. I, I moved here in 2005. Right. You moved here in 2005, yep. full time. Full time. Found your way here. I just got lucky. You got lucky. You know, it's a wonderful place to be. Yes. Once you, you know, if you find your way here, and once you get the sand in your toes, it's a tough place to leave. Yeah, that's pretty much the most common thing I hear when I ask that question. Is I got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought I was being witty. No, it's a common no, answer. No, that's actually. Yeah, I thought you heard it from somebody else no. at a bar. So, so, <laughs> so, so what are you thinking, me? So you moved here in 2005, and, and, I, I and, did. and your back was your background in culinary. Always, in culinary, yeah. always yeah. cooking. I went to culinary school. I went to the Culinary Institute of America, yeah. and I have a bachelor's degree from there. And I've, I've cooked around and. I've done front of the house and back of the house, meaning I've done the you know the, the maitre d' work, I've done the chef work, and yeah. and, and just just about three years ago we opened up our, our own place. And, and before that, you were working at a restaurant that was here. I worked at several different restaurants here. Yeah. yeah, I came out here originally in 2005 to work at Topper's Restaurant, the yeah. Wild Winded Inn. Yeah, and I've had a chance to work at a handful of other places, and I did a lot of private chef work. I've bartended. I've been a a carpenter, you know, it's yeah, yeah, the, the Nantucket, whole, so, the whole thing, yeah. you know, the whole thing, right? For sure. And and so did you did you did you start the culinary? The, the, the what, what yeah, you it's, it's the my it, the business belongs to my wife and I, and then we we opened it in 
January 2016. So, and, and what is it? What do you? What? How does it work? Well, the, we, the Corner Table Cafe is just a, it's a grab and go cafe. It's not just it's a, it is a grab and go cafe, and we offer, you know, high quality handmade coffee drinks, drip coffee, and espresso drinks, and a lot of grab and go food. A lot of uh, what you call in the industry home meal replacement stuff you could grab and take home and you know put in the microwave or throw in the oven and, and get meals. We have a nice yeah. salad program, um, and we do lots of lots of good work. As far as in the cafe, we have a great seating area, and then we have a. An outside area for seating as well when the weather's nice, yep. and then upstairs is uh, the culinary center, which we also have seating of the rain. You know, a day like today, if it's rainy, people can come and sit upstairs in the culinary center. But we offer a wide variety of educational classes, event space. Nonprofits use our, our dining room for little board meetings in the off season. We try very hard to be a you know community space. And, and, and can you just talk about what the educational classes are? Sure, you know, our classes, it's not like we're targeting young kids who want to become chefs. Right. Although, if you're a young kid and you want to become a chef, <laughs> I'll put you to work. Um, we target kind of the enthusiastic home cook. So a lot of our classes are really based on that. They're, they're, they're for the everyday guy or, or a girl or, you know, who needs to cook for themselves or cook for their family or is interested in learning something new. We do a couple of different styles of programs. One is a demonstration dinner where it's usually just myself kind of lecturing and preparing the food for about 20, 25 people. And we'll go through specific things that we like. And most recently, we did an Indian food dinner because I love Indian food. And yeah. we get a chance to work with That's cookbooks. Cool. Yeah, and, and I, I'm a great collector of cookbooks. So we do a series of cooking by the book classes where I pick a favorite cookbook and put together a multi-course dinner and sell tickets to it, include the wine and the price tag. And people come in and have a great time. And I get a chance to, to learn because... Uh, you know, I, I buy more cookbooks than you could possibly cook everything out of. So, so having a reason so to cook why are we not great. surprised that he I should have given you all of the cookbooks. You know what? Because of the place now, people are constantly dropping off boxes of cookbooks that they were on their way to the dump with. And I've got really them. great stuff, really you, great you old like editions. Do you have like lending library? Can we do, yeah. In, in you, the, can, you do. In you the cafe, like we, we, um, we registered as a small public library through a, a non-profit. And we have like a little plaque. And we have the, the whole place <laughs> is great. full of... Uh, of That's lightly used cookbooks and people are welcome to grab them and take them and look through them. Yeah. And then as you go upstairs and you come into my cookbook collection, which I don't want people taking, <laughs> but they're welcome to look through. And then on the top floor, I've got kind of my, my presence collection of cookbooks, which I don't want you to look through. You, you don't, don't even want to see them. Well, no, I want to see people, them. I know where they are. They include a lot of stuff that I've inherited over the years. Yeah. I come from a cooking family. So cookbooks and cooking education has been a big part of my life. And now with my facility, I'm able to pass that on. And, and now also through the Outer Expo, which I've known Allison for a long time, and she invited me uh, last year, right? That was it was the first it. time we had a cooking demonstration in the right? so kitchen, yeah. I was super happy to do it, and we did a really fun class, and it was yeah. well attended, but apparently it's been the, the talk of the, the senior community for a while, <laughs> and so I'm excited to go back and, and do another class and have it even even better attended. Yeah. So what did you do last year, and what are you going to do this year? I'm going to do something very, or, very or, similar. Or, or, or is it a secret? I didn't know. I have no secrets right. from you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, last year we did uh, cooking with... with Leftovers in mind. You must be great in the front of the house too. Because uh, oftentimes, you know, oftentimes, oh, you know yes. when I think about restaurants, you always think, well, there's the front of the house guy, the seller, right? Yeah. And then there's the back of the house guy that actually knows something, right? Knows how to yeah, cook. He knows it all. I'm doubly blessed to be able to, to yes. do both of them, which right. is kind of why I put myself in the situation I am now. Or you would have been great in a food truck. I mean, I would think this is kind of like the total experience, right? <laughs> I like to think I'm great where, 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 where I am. <laughs> you know, I don't have much more aspiration. I'm, I'm living and doing exactly what I want, which is getting a chance to cook and talk to people at the same time. So yeah. it's something that I really enjoy. So last year at the, at the Auto Expo, we did cooking with leftovers in mind. The idea that yeah. I wanted to do something that's real and doable. A lot of the food that I do, I like it to be kind of simple, but those are the, the, the two item checklists. Is it real, is it doable? Am I gonna give somebody something that- Is it real? What do you mean, I get, I get doable, what do you mean real? Is it a, a real recipe full of things that people are, are gonna actually use? You know, is, is this idea worthwhile? Fine, if it's worthwhile, is it something that people could actually do? Right. You know, I don't, is it doable to teach you a, a cassoulet? Probably, but it's not really realistic that, that you would ever going to make it. Right. Right. So the idea or of. not more than one. Right. But the idea right. of teaching somebody how to make, you know, Julia Child's beef bourguignon or teaching somebody how to make beef stew, yeah. you know, you try to make things more simplified. And ingredients that you have in your house so you don't have to go Correct. out and buy. And, you like... know, one of the things that I find is that the biggest inhibitor to people actually cooking at home yeah. is a, a lack of knife skills, a lack of confidence when it comes to chopping an onion. A lack of knife skills. Well, because when you're opening up a, a recipe yeah. and it says that you need two cups of sliced or diced or, you know, peeled this and that, yeah. Yeah. for a lot of people, that's going to be kind of a, a little bit of a stopper like, right away. Like we're just not going. Like I just, I know, I know that my knives aren't sharp. I know that I'm not good at dicing an onion. What well, takes me literally 
30 seconds to dice an onion, to dice a cup of onions. It's going to take somebody with a dull knife, the wrong size knife, not the proper skill set, you know, a small little cheese cutting board because they don't have a proper cutting board. Yeah. You know, all these things make it much more difficult Including for people the, to get the trip to the emergency room also, which you have to kind of... Yeah, you might well, have to figure out that you're going to have exactly. to add that. <laughs> right. Yeah, so when you can come up with recipes, especially for the, the senior community, yeah. that has stuff that they can... You know, the grocery store does sell pre-diced onions and, and pre-diced celery and, and things like that. And I think there's a lot of... I think there's a lot of sense of fulfillment that comes from cooking your own food. This is great. You know, so if you can give people a way to cook their own food, and, you know, I love to focus on stews, soups, salads, things that people can do slow and low, so that doesn't take a lot of heavy lifting or moving around. I think last year we talked about, you know, we talked about what you could do if you bought a rotisserie chicken. I mean, I brought in some roasted chickens because I think it's even better if you can roast them on your own, but we made a quick chicken soup, we made a quick chicken salad, you know, and we changed up the recipe a little bit with different herbs and spices, and, but all stuff that was, you know, I'd went to the grocery store that morning and bought the, the pre-cut or the small batches of things because with cooking for yourself also comes you know, learn how to shop for yourself. <laughs> exactly. So a lot of that stuff is, is overwhelming for a lot of people. So, so, so in the, do you, want, you mind if I just? No, this no, is really this, fast. Is, this no. is really fast. So in the, in the in your regular classes, do uh -huh. you find that you that that the demographic makeup of those classes tends to be tends to be more older people versus more, who's who's the typical person? Going our our typical class? demo that we're most successful with, they're coming into yeah. either the demonstration classes or yeah. the hands-on classes is usually an older crowd and, 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 and definitely more, more female than male. Yes. Um, you know, in the summertime, we do some more kind of try to be a little bit more hip and end up with a small, younger crowd. Sure. But even if it's a younger crowd, it, it's, it's couples. So it's people yeah. who are looking to do more cooking at home. I think people like it as a, as a date night idea. And, and yeah. for people who are just really, really interested in it, you know, we have a couple of people who come to a lot of classes and, you know, work with me in the summertime to plan specific classes for them and their friends that they want to do. Like they, they're really interested in learning Thai food. Can we do a class for Thai food? And Oh, so folks can do that. You can actually just, I, I always thought that makes sense. You're just constantly yeah. trying to adapt to kind of what people are interested in. For sure. You know, I have a great background and I've done a lot of cooking and, you know, with, with the internet and my cookbook collection, if you were to tell me that you needed a, you know, a North African meal for 12 people next week, you know, give me a minute and that, we'll, we'll figure it out. That would be a surprise request. Right? They also have a great website and newsletter that goes out that talks about the programs that they mm -hmm. offer. And, and also know. talks about all the partnerships that we have within the community. So things like the Art Council events and stuff that are coming up, people that we love to try to support and we'll try yeah. to come up with classes, just like we're doing with, uh, with, with the, the elder the, the event. There. The reason why the Elder I, Expo? Expo, thank yes. you. Just like we're doing the Elder Expo. The reason, you know, there's something yeah. timely that we can do a class based on, we'd love to. The reason and, why, oh, and also, they, they've done a, a, um, a benefit for the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs, too. <clears throat> we oh. did one, <clears throat> was that a wine tasting? Or? We try our best yeah. to, to, you know, to say yes where we can. And some causes are, are important to us, so. So, I, I, what, I was just, the, you can tell how eloquent I am. <laughs> I just, I just, it's because I'm on TV, right? I just fall apart. <laughs> but I was, what was interesting to me was earlier this week, as it happens, mm -hmm. I had a client who um, has said she definitely needs to move to assisted living because she just can't cook. Yeah. She can't cook anymore. So I suppose one of the interesting questions, but, but when she says she can't cook, I assume what that means is she can't cook in the way in which she was cooking before. Mm -hmm. And she's concerned or about... Or she doesn't want to cook or she's not interested in it, right? And, or she may not be interested. Yeah. Or it just may become, be becoming too much of a hassle. So from, from that perspective, you know, are there designs of recipes that kind of can deal with that? So that because I, there, there, there absolutely are. Yeah. But, you know, I think for, for, for all of us, but for seniors and for little kids especially, nutrition is incredibly important, yeah. right? So if you're at a point in your life where you have no interest in cooking for... I mean... Cooking, it, it, it's, it, it's got to be something that you want to do. If it's something that you need to do, it's subsistence cooking, it, it can be, it can really drain on you. It can be a pain. So to find ways that makes cooking interesting might be a worthwhile thing, but, you know, if there's an opportunity for somebody to get food that's made by human beings, such as right. you would in assisted living, as opposed to what I see a lot in the grocery store, you know, or, or older people buying a lot of convenience foods so that's really, really hyper-processed and not really nutrient-rich and, and not what they should be doing. I mean, there's a lot of great options you can buy little salads in a bag, which I see a lot of people do, and yeah. and things like that. But it's if you don't want to cook, you know, you still have to eat. That's right. I, I can make it more fun, and I can give people recipes. But if they have no interest in it, 
you know, then they're still going to end up buying the, the convenience foods and things like that. So now, do you do like in your in your classes or in this presentation? Do, mm -hmm. do you do a nutrition piece? I'm not a nutritionist. Yeah. You know, I, I believe in a lot of simple nutritional principles, which I think yeah. nobody would argue with me about, which is just eating a diversity of food, eating less or less processed foods, yeah. eating a lot of different colors. It's usually a good a good thing and real basic simple rules. You eating know, a lot of different colors. Yeah. Just literally of the food. That, yeah. Just you, when you look at your plate, can you have can you pick out three different colors, or are you a meat and potatoes guy and you've got yeah. just kind of drab colors? And you're always doing if you're the same eating thing. bright and beautiful yeah. colors, you're eating bright and beautiful food. And now, have you ever had uh, in any of those classes? Have you brought a nutritionist in? Because we just, work with people all summer long, yeah. and when we have a lot of more people here who yeah. who know about it, you know, we're, we're always welcome to, to bring in other chefs and other people who have interest. And we did a, a series this past summer that we called a Nourished Life and. We brought in a, nur a, a nourished nur life. A that was just our life. cute little name yeah, for a series of classes <laughs> that we had different nutritionists coming in and talking about, you know, plant-based eating for healthy skin, or, yeah. or just you know, we had this great chef from the from the vineyard, yeah. uh, a woman named Kai Keenan, and she's got a place called. Oh, oh it's called the, it's called the other island. The other yeah. island. Oh. The, 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 <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't know. I've never been. What? <laughs> But uh, you know, we worked with a great, she's a plant-based chef uh, from the video, and she came over a couple times and did events and did classes. Yeah. So we definitely bring that aspect in because it's not something that I'm strong in and it's something that I'm learning about. When I learned to cook, there was one objective and that was the objective was to, uh, to be delicious, right? <laughs> I don't right. care how much salt, fat, sugar, whatever it was, not the issue. it had to be delicious. It had to be going to somebody's mouth and, and blow them away. Right. So that's not where the industry is currently. You know, so the industry is a lot more people really want to know what they're eating, why they're eating it. Yeah, right. You know, people don't, there's, there's no longer... I'm, I'm amazed by my kids. I'm amazed, you know, that the, the, the whole types of meals, they're people, just gone. I, people make... Because people understand, yeah. they really want to know. It's they're making food. decisions for what they eat based on, you know, how they feel, which right. is not how I was raised. You know, I was raised, you, you make food decisions based on the most delicious. When my family would go out to dinner, it was a competition to see who would order the best dish. The best, right. And you couldn't order the same as somebody else had. Pass them around. Or whoever ordered yeah. first got, got the first did. So if somebody ordered what you were going to have, you had to get something different. Right. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's a good game. Is that, yeah. So just, a, just, now just as a curiosity, because mm -hmm. you've been here quite a few years, is there a, a nutritionist or someone that you feel is, you know, can really give good nutritional type advice who is, who is full-time, who is here year-round? So what do they tend to? Kathleen Minahan uh, is a, the woman that I know. Kathleen Minahan. Kathleen, Kathleen Minahan. She's got a... Of business, I'm sure you'd have no trouble yeah. searching Minnie Han on Nantucket, and then yeah. you turn her up. Um, she and I have done some work together, and she's a friend. But she is definitely the nutritionist that I, that I know. That doesn't mean there's not no, a, no. a lot of good people. I just no, I'm just I'm yeah. just curious because it went, because once again it, it just really strikes me, and, 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 it, and it, from the perspective of having a community where Frank and Mary can live until they die, you mm -hmm. know, and, and be as healthy as possible, it's, it almost becomes also kind of a board of health. Function. If you're focusing on senior issues, is to try to figure out how you can be building those recipes and yeah. combining with them a, a nutritionist. And that's like it's a great place for retirement too. I mean, as far as small towns in the country, the fact that we have competing theater groups and, and things like that because of the amount of philanthropy here in the summer, it's a great place year round. We're seeing a lot more of the older crowd kind of retirement here, and that's that's a lot of my demographic as well. You know, when we do these these events like at the Indian dinner the other night, we'll have yeah. the same group of you know six retired. Three recut, three couples, retired people, and and they love to come in and do the events. I'm not sure if they cook at home or not, <laughs> but they definitely come in for for my food occasionally. Can we also ask him about the the building where he where he rents about that space? Sure, sure, sure. Can you just talk about that? Yeah, so our our building is located at 22 Federal, and it's a corner of Federal Street and Broad Street yeah. uh, on Nantucket. And for a long time, the the building was in in disrepair. Um, the last known name for it was the Mooney Building because Robert Mooney had a law office there, but it had to have closed. I don't know, yeah, ages was, ago. Then I think the town used it town for town used it for town offices, but yeah. so they still lovingly refer to it as a Mooney building. Mm -hmm. um, it was town offices, beach, and public uses or something. But the building eventually just became too kind of decrepit. It was low stories, had a lot of asbestos in it. Yeah. Um, so the building went to auction actually a couple times, and it was purchased by, by Remain Nantucket, which is a local nonprofit, and they have a mission to keep downtown Nantucket um, sustainable year-round. So they have a, a couple of other portions of real estate in the downtown area, and yeah. 
That's a great mission. It's a great mission, and they do a great <laughs> job of it. They're well funded, and they and they really care. The people who are, you know, running it uh, here on the ground are, are terrific, and and Wendy Schmidt, who's a philanthropist behind it, is is even more so. You know, um, but it's a great it's a great space. So they purchased the building. They had the idea for a culinary center, yeah. and they put out an, an RFP, a recommendation for proposal, and there was a competitive bidding process. And my wife and I stopped what we were doing and worked really hard in, on submitting a business plan and putting the finances together to operate the businesses that we now operate, the Culinary Center um, and the Corner Table Cafe. And through a, you know about a month long of interviews and questions and reviews, we were selected yeah. to get the lease. So we have a, a wonderful undermarket lease on that space. So and that's why it works. That's why it works. That's why we're able to do community targeted stuff. That's why we're able to run a coffee shop and an education space. And that's why we're not, you know, another gallery another insurance shop, another real estate office, which, not to begrudge them anything, but the, the idea of keeping downtown the Nantucket sustainable, we're open year-round, and we do a lot of events all winter long to try to bring the community together yeah. in the downtown areas, whether that's a trivia night, an open mic night, and other creative ideas that we're just still trying to come up with. So if you have any good ideas to get the elders to come out in the wintertime, and we did, like you said, a couple fundraisers. and. Mm -hmm. So you actually open up the space sometimes in the evening. Yeah, our coffee shop's open until 9 p.m. right now, 8 p.m. for the rest of the That's winter. Right. And That's then true. the upstairs, we do events that'll go well into the evening. Because it, it just reminds me of the, a few years ago, a friend, a friend of mine from a, a, town, a town called Edgartown on this other island was <laughs> bemoaning the fact that the last hardware store was closed. You know, mm -hmm. the last hardware store was, you know, I don't know if it ended up, I think it ended up closed. It, once again, to be replaced by a, uh, you know, something that would pay a ton of rent for yeah. four months and then leave, right? Yeah, and, so it's and, great and, that we have that nonprofit is working to, you know, help keep the doors open in downtown. So the notion of strategically trying yeah. to figure out, because it really, it, cause, and I suppose if, you, if that's the conscious effort, then it really makes you think about, so what are the kind of constituent parts of a downtown mm -hmm. that, that really make it that place where you still want to get down? Yeah, and fortunately there's a lot of groups who, who work on answering that question all the time. I mean, locally we have the Remain Nantucket, but I know there's, my wife has worked in local government before, and there's, there's national programs of, about, you know, rebuilding and revitalizing small downtowns, because around the country it's, it's a problem. I mean, we have an interesting problem here in that the hardware store is only closing to become an art gallery or something like that, whereas in other places you have the places closing because there's no, no need no for business. it. Yeah. I've That's actually right. spoken to, to Joy, Greg's wife, about having the uh, memory cafe in the space oh, wow. and so we are working on yeah we are working on that's something near and dear to us my, my mother-in-law yeah. passed away with alzheimer's so yeah so so, so you get it and, 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 and yeah. once again so just so folks keep getting used to it so a memory cafe is a memory cafe can be a lot of different things but it is a place for um people with memory impairments to you know alzheimer's dementia um to gather with their caregivers in a comfortable safe place and you know, have a slightly programmed, but um, a comfortable place to meet and greet and be. Right. And what's, it, what's interesting about the kind of, the, the concept is that it, 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 is, it isn't so much about what's going on, it's about just creating that atmosphere that, you know, I'm safe here, it's home. Yeah. It's, it's like home. And I remember, once again, the only time I was at, I, went, I stopped by at his place once, I didn't know any of this backstory, I just kind of wandered in and I was like, well, this is awfully nice. You know, it just feels, you just managed to do that. You know, yeah. it just feels like a really comfortable place. I like that as a catchphrase under my sign. Where you could keep <laughs> a lot This of place is awfully nice. <laughs> this place is awfully nice. I like that. Nice yeah. place yeah. to <laughs> find it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So it's just, and, and the, so the memory cafe would be yeah, like. Yeah, well, it's mm -hmm. handicap accessible. There are, I mean, it has everything going for it. And, um, and we, have, we have, you know, we've got a great big multi-use space and we could easily build a little cafe in there to make people feel safe and familiar and, and, and you know cooking demonstrations yeah. I mean there are things that we could that you know we would look to provide as far as an activity or um, and the space is multifunctional you could you could do an art class there you could do a, we do we do wine and watercolor yeah. in the winter time as a fun program what, boy I could take up that for a long time <laughs> some pretty funny looking watercolors yeah. be, the brewery a does a pints and painting thing yeah. pints and <laughs> No, there's you know, a lot. there's a lot of people looking for stuff to do here. Right. So if you can come up with a decent idea, well, maybe they'll come out. We'll be there. Yeah. So, Allison, thank you for yes. suggesting this. This is just really good. So yeah. that, this is, that was terrific. 
terrific. Right. So just to close, do you just want to kind of remind folks, you know, what was the date and time again of the, uh, the, well, the Senior Expo? The date and time for the Elder Expo, the the Elder Elder Expo. Expo. is um, October 20th. It's yeah. going to be at the high school in the Great Hall yeah. under the whale and yeah. in the auditorium from 10 and to in the, 1. And in the culinary classroom. Yep. And, 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 and the beautiful culinary <laughs> classroom, yeah. which is, you know, just like... It's a like great, a kitchen, yeah. yeah, like a kitchen. And you get to see him, right? See, see him, I'll eat his too. food. I'll You'll be probably there. be wandering around. I'll, I'll Definitely. Make, I'll make you a nice cup of soup. Terrific. <laughs> um, a, a couple of other things, if I might yeah. mention them. Um, the Center for Elder Affairs has a couple of things going on. Um, October 4th, there is the Ships in Dinner. And what they do is they, it, it will benefit the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs and the Salt Marsh C Senior Center. I believe it's their last night. And um, there are reservations for seatings between 5.30 and 9.30. And the proceeds from the event go to the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs. And that's the last night of operation for the restaurant for the, for the winter? I believe so. Nice. I believe so. Um, then there's the annual yard sale, which happens at the Salt Marsh. Um, that's October 27th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If people have things they want to donate to the yard sale, there is a drop-off. You can drop it off at the Salt Marsh Center. And mm -hmm. it's a great... I got these really neat, well, interesting, <laughs> interesting stuff at the, at the, at, at the yep. um, place. And then December 1st, the Salt Marsh Holiday Sale Open House will be taking place, again, at the Salt Marsh. And if people don't know where that is, it's 81 Washington Street, um, on the way to Sale Seafood and the Great Harbor Yacht Club. But it is Nantucket's Senior Center right now. Um, and. And it's we'll a great, talk, and we'll be talking about that more in the future. Yep, and there's and there's hopefully going to be more information on changes that are happening there. But those are three fundraising um, issues or things, things that we'd like to um, I'd like to bring to people's attention. So, so at one of the things that Alice and I talked about was that at the end of these shows, <coughs> from now on, Allison's going to do that. Try to try to give you a summary of <coughs> maybe coming up, and we'll keep reminding folks of that. Because this is really what this show is really all about. I mean, we want to keep Frank and Mary entertained, after all. So, thank you so much. You're welcome. Mr. Margolis, a real pleasure. Thanks. Thanks thank for you having very me. Much. Thanks for having me. Thank You're you welcome. for watching, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. Thank you.